Minecraft and from the Encyclopedia of the Secret Society that your Prime Minister belongs to. And just like high-ranking Freemasons, male and female witches also drink out of a human skull. But here the practitioner drinks wine, in which they first dissolve or boil the brains or heart of an animal before consuming it all from the human skull. In this ritual, the initiate is instructed to drink in the night at spring water out of a skull of one that hath been slain. That's right. Out of a, the skull of a human who's been murdered or sacrificed. Otherwise, eat a pig with a knife that slew a man. Please don't turn away. Look straight ahead and open your eyes to the planet you are on. Because the real monster under your bed doesn't actually go away when you close your eyes. In other rituals of the craft, you burn a rooster while he's alive. With the use of a, of a poisonous plant used in ointments and potions of witches, you can assure death and destruction on a victim. You want to make a female enemy sterile? Or a male enemy impotent for the rest of his life? Otherwise, you can just kill them. The hand of glory is the severed hand that is dried and preserved to be used in black magic. Yes, a dead human hand. A black circle is most effective for operations of evil. The use of blood and sex in ritual was considered helpful for obtaining the necessary energy to successfully work magic or achieve mystical insight. But here's where the darkness thickens even further. Animals such as black cats or children may be sacrificed and participants may drink the blood of the sacrifice and just so you know that Stanley Kubrick wasn't joking an orgy of participants sometimes follows the mass no remorse just science the science of witchcraft the royal art and here what's necessary for the working is the fat of young children dead children how many children do you think go missing in Australia every year? That's how many. And what about the world? Is it one million? Well, according to the International Centre for Missing and Exploited Children, it's eight million children per year. Do you think that the highest, most absolute and most divine knowledge of natural philosophy has anything to do with that? Any chance of an international secret system that is bolstered by initiations and degrees and bound under the most brutal penalties that the human mind can ever devise? Do you think that has any involvement? Any chance of that? Am I saying that this Freemason has sacrificed children? No, I never said that. But did he ever even remotely mention the secret societies? Did he ever try to warn you? Educate you? No, he was under oath. Am I saying that these Freemasons have sacrificed children? No, I never said that either. But have they ever warned you about the secret society that believes that Lucifer is the saviour? The, the society functioning right under your nose, that secret society? No, not a chance. Julia Gillard admitted she belonged to one, but that's about it because they're all under oath. So where does this ancient craft originate from? It originates from the spirit realm, from spirit beings. That's who taught mankind the royal art before civilization began. In this chapter, The Rites of Satanism and Witchcraft, the manual explains that a typical satanic Sabbath was, number one, a homage to the devil, usually performed as the osculum infamy, also known as the kiss of shame, which is so shameful that we'll just put it this way. The ritual involves... Kissing the hindquarters of the devil. The rear. Surely this is far removed from anything to do with Freemasonry. People, the original order of the Knights Templar were found guilty of this very same obscene ritual. And where do you find the modern variant of the Knights Templars of today? I told you, in the highest degree of Freemasonry, right here. Here's a couple of them now. And what's on this Templar's head? From the Masonic Encyclopedia, remember, a symbol of the Baphomet, according to 33rd degree Alistair Crowley. And we could confirm that in the Satanic Bible. That's exactly what's hiding deep inside of Freemasonry. I'm only showing you this to show you the reality of Satanism and the demonic realm, the world you can't see.
On this earth? <laughs> and in this earth and in, uh, and in a world we can't see. Look here. The hierarchy of demons occupies a more important place in both black and white magic rituals. Both black and white. This is where the power of witchcraft comes from. And this is the reason these bizarre rituals actually function and actually work. Because after the ritual is performed on Earth, its effects are carried out to their conclusion in the spirit realm. By spiritual beings or demons, actual demons. The reality that is hidden from you. Because if you found out that Satan was real, then that would have to make Jesus Christ real too. And he is the one they hate. And if Jesus Christ is real, that changes everything. And this is how much they hate him. The prayer that Jesus taught his disciples is performed backwards. The high priest is sometimes naked. A prostitute assists him and a naked virgin who may later be deflowered is the altar. Everything that is sacred is defiled and everything that is filthy is on it as pure. Because of their burning hatred of Jesus Christ, just as he's hated by the fallen angels that they worship. It gets worse when you hear what they use as a substitute for the bread that Jesus broke and told his disciples to eat in remembrance of him. A wafer which initiates me with this, this and this. Or the name of Satan may be written upon it. And this isn't even witchcraft. This is just a ceremony announcing who they love and who they hate. So is Satan real? It continues to state in the hierarchy of demons at the very top, Satanakia, whose title is the Commander-in-Chief. What did Bob Dylan, the Freemason, call the one he made a bargain with? Should, should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. Same title, Commander-in-Chief. Chief Commander. Are you following? But watch this. In case the darkness is getting a little too thick and encompassing for you, let's shine a little light. The true light that only the Gospels can supply. Speaking to us humans and revealing something about Satan, the Gospel state. You follow the spirit of the age in this world system as dominated by the commander of the spiritual powers of the air. Satan, the god of this world, the commander. You still think the Gospels are wrong or fake? See, Satanists know that the spirits also live in the air, just as the Gospels reveal. You can summon any of these demonic spirits by name if you possess the royal art. Who do you think this figure on the front cover represents? A magician who is inadequately prepared and cannot attain his desires may seek the aid of Satan. That's who this is. Now that you know, hopefully for a fact, that these are at the top of the human food chain. Do you think they'd be fooling around with stupid fairy tales? No, witchcraft and Satanism is absolutely real. Hence their earthly power. This demon here, fifth in the pyramid structure, holds the title of Inspector General. And what's the title of the highest degree in Freemasonry, who exists in every local lodge in every suburb? A suburb near you, Inspector General, same title as the living demon. Do you believe me now? You can even conjure Lucifer himself or be Beelzebuth, who the Gospels call the Prince of the Devils. Both of whom are listed as superior spirits in this book of witchcraft and magic. I can show you so much more from this disgusting book, but I'll cut it off here with the seal of Saturn, a demonic sigil from the complete book of magic and witchcraft. And this is his seal. Can you see? Do you see? This is the society that lives amongst you, above you. The one eye religion of Freemasonry hidden right in front of those who have their eyes wide shut. I'm going to now show you what that world that they are building from the ashes of the one you're currently living in looks like. But lastly, to drive this business of blood sacrifice home, here's American rapper Azealia Banks with the triple six hand sign. 
and now over the all-seeing eye, the all-seeing eye in her video, the eye in the triangle of the Freemasons on her shirt, and the devil's horns, her liberator, her master, her commander, and now displaying the secret society vow of silence. Along with that, the last brief glimpse into the highly concealed royal art of Freemasonry. Melt of crap that's about to come off my floor right now, guys. Oh my god. Three years worth of brujeria. Yes, you know I gotta scrape all this shit up. And what does brujeria mean? You know what it means. Witchcraft. Azealia Banks, the witch, with her eye in the triangle shirt. And the logo of, for example, the Grand Lodge of Freemasonry in Spain. One and the same symbol. The logo of the Fraternity of the Freemasons and the logo of this Church of Lucifer. The one eye. One and the same symbol. Freemasonry has deceived you. Yes, people, now you know how Satanism has functioned out of sight and out of mind. You still think there's no such thing as witchcraft? Or that it only existed in the olden days? You still think that blood isn't a part of the royal art? You still think that local Masonic lodges of the world are not filtering systems for Satanists and a cloak for organized Satanism with a grand master plan for the world? You think there's nothing to the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ? Uh, after seeing all this and the Azealia Banks clip, and after realizing that there exists a hidden and guarded science of the art of blood sacrifice. You think there was no science behind Jesus' crucifixion? A deeper reality that we can't see or understand? You think Jesus didn't know what he was doing? Or are you one of those who still think he didn't exist? Tell me, how can they hate something that doesn't exist? If only you could hear from some other Freemasons who have the courage to break their oaths. But you won't. You won't. This is probably it. But I once heard from a Freemason, an honest one, in about 2016, after I posted this picture on Facebook. He knew. He knew the truth. Just like you do now, or just like you should. And he wrote to me. And he said, by the time we are done, Every church will be a brothel. Well, in case you think that that's impossible, this is a fashion show that was held in a church, a real church, and it was organized by high-ranking Freemasons, who you will see now to be Satanists. Designed to be a heart-wrenching mockery and a colossal sign of the times, this event. Just so you know, it's a Masonic production. Here's the inside of a lodge. See those twin pillars? Well, here they are. See the Masonic checkered floorboard? Well, there it is. See the Masonic square and compass? Well, there it is. And do you see the eye of Freemasonry? Yeah, there they are. The lower square in the square and compass has been disfigured so that... as to not make it too obvious. But now that we've established that, here is the spirit of Freemasonry, as displayed through just a few of the models. This one wears the horns of the Baphomet, the horns of Satan, with his all-seeing eye in the background, more horns. This model wears the all-seeing eye, as does this one. And this disgusting thing, with another huge all-seeing eye of Lucifer in the background, then there's this, with a satanic pentagram on her face. And finally, this male model in a skirt with two satanic inverted crosses of Jesus Christ on his top in a church. Oh, the morbid victory of the Freemasons. Unstoppable. For now. When people like Lady Gaga cover one eye while wearing an inverted cross and, and you don't see the connection of the one eye symbolism to Satanism, then your observational skills have been compromised. 
In the span of two days, I saw these ads in my local shopping centre. And that alone tells me that the satanic age is here, manifesting all around us, seemingly invisible, while you look straight ahead through the symbols. Just like the initiation process of the secret societies themselves, society at large must be incrementally introduced and seduced into further depravity and self-love. And haven't we been slowly but surely perverted over time, degree by degree, until we think that men dressing as women is beautiful and healthy, anal sex is a form of expressing love, the sick world of pornography is considered as liberating for women and men and protected by free speech. In California, babies are allowed to be aborted after birth because it's a woman's choice. And that's not considered murder. A world where we should applaud young children like Desmond is amazing, cross-dressing while he dances for gay men at a gay bar on a podium because he's paving the way for the kids of the future. And we should get shamed, fined and even jailed if we point out that this is sick, sinful, and dare call it evil, which is what it is. What spirit is behind Desmond is amazing? Oh yeah, an evil spirit, no doubt about it. You think Freemasonry and their peculiar morals aren't behind the decline of Christian morality and morality worldwide? It's all by design. The Masonic war on Jesus and the Christian social structure, generally undetected by human perceptions, and still people will write to me and comment on how absurd what I've said is. A cloud over the eyes of their heart. Well, I'll tell you this. There is no bigger axe that has ever been grinded than the one Freemasonry grinds. Because the appearance of Jesus Christ pretty much destroyed their religion, drove it underground, and they will have their revenge. Soon you're going to see it. We've all been initiated into the lowest levels of materialistic Satanism under the banner of secular humanism. I know blokes who think that life's great, mate. Life's terrific. Life's what you make it. Evil, Lucifer, Satan, these are just words that Christians invented to help them sleep better at night. There are no cults. There are no conspiracies. John F. Kennedy's speech about secret societies plotting against the world, that's not relevant anymore. That's history. There's no such thing as Satanism amongst civilized people. Oh, children, when darkness comes to your door, takes your wife, takes your health, your job, your home, your freedom, your children. Then you call out, oh my God, my God, this is evil. Why is this happening to me? Well, here comes the darkness. Here comes the evil. You want to know what the new world order looks like? You want to know what the future holds? You want to know what horror is coming to our planet? As Jesus told us, for then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Masonic New World Order. These are the mysterious Georgia Guidestones, also known as the American Stonehenge. They are a set of granite monoliths which were constructed in 1980 and funded by an unknown and anonymous group and commissioned by a man using the pseudonym R.C. Christian. On a ledger beside the monument is written, let these be guidestones to an age of reason. Here we have a reference to a new age. With this we get a clue as to the spirit behind the structure. The age of reason happens to be the title of a book by Thomas Paine. Now you can colour him any which way you want to, but whichever way, one glaring colour shines through. Thomas was a hater of Christianity. That's the second clue to the spirit behind the Georgia Guidestones. The third is the fact that the Guidestones feature as what could be seen as a replacement to the Ten Commandments of the Christian God with the new Ten Commandments of the New Age, because I will not steal, cheat, lie, kill, and so on. They're just, well, too narrow for the new age, for the age of reason. Clearly designed 
to be a take on the biblical commandments being ten in number. They are all very vague, very vague indeed. But anyone can ascertain the horror that must first take place before this new age can begin by looking at the first commandment, sorry, guideline. Because this one's not vague at all. Maintain humanity at under 500 million. That's right. A reduction of at least 7 billion human beings would be necessary for that. This thing cost the equivalent of half a million US dollars to build and the street it's located on is named after it, so that tells you how much reach its creators had. Its presence alone is a disgrace and a declaration of execution to most living people alive today. But let's go on to the fourth clue as to the spirit behind these monuments. The monuments outlining the Age of Reason. The name R.C. Christian, the so-called person who commissioned the building of these giant slabs, Anyone who's versed in secret societies or is a high-ranking ranking member themselves would instantly recognize the pseudonym as a reference to the secret society known as the Rosicrucians, which is just another secret society branch that exists under the umbrella of Freemasonry, which is an extension of all secret societies of the past and is now the mother of all of them. In this Masonic website, Worshipful Master Wynne Westcott urges the Freemasons to consider their status as Rosicrucians. The RC stands for Rosenkrauts. Christian Rosenkrauts is the mythical founder of the Rosicrucian order. And as impossible as it is for me to prove that Thomas Paine himself, the writer of Age of Reason, was a Freemason, he did also write this book, The Origin of Freemasonry. That is the spirit behind the Georgia Guidestones, the satanic spirit, and a straight off the bat view of this approaching new age. I told you, the whole system is about to change, and it's not going into the future, it's actually going back into the past. The old religion, that's what's taking everything over. And you'll walk straight into it, blind as a bat, thinking these people want to help you. They will appear as your saviors, forgetting or never being told in the first place that all this time there have been two societies in the world, the visible one, which is the one we're in, and the invisible one. Remember that the invisible one considers you profane, vile, and vulgar. Why on earth would they want to keep you around? In a book I can't mention written by them, people are referred to as useless eaters. We've become excess inventory, redundant, and past our use-by date in their eyes. Think about this. According to a prediction by information technology and research advisory firm Gartner, one-third of jobs will be replaced by software, robots, and smart machines by 2025. That's four years away. Google Engineering Director Ray Kurzweil anticipates that robots will have reached human-level intelligence by 2029. And by 2050, 80% of all jobs will be eliminated by automation. What on earth are you and your family good for then? What do you think the secret society will do to the vile multitude then? The utopia is coming, but it ain't your utopia. You still think that by the measure of the minds of international Satanism, you should be kept around? This excess baggage that the bulk of society has become? No, no, no. The new age is dawning. And generally speaking, you're not invited. It'll just look like you are. Remember that Charles Darwin, the Freemason, is listed as an influential figure in the Satanic Church. So, mass murder and mass death are natural and necessary themes in the name of evolution, an artificially induced evolution into this. He is the same image in real life in Eilat Israel, seemingly unrelated to the seal on the US dollar bill, right? But standing in glory with a Masonic squaring compass, telling you exactly who owns this pyramidal symbol, complete with the one eye on top. Same symbol, same designers, worshipping the same God. 
you should be getting goosebumps by now. Is this a conspiracy led by international Freemasonry? Oh, you don't have to bet your life on it because your life has already been placed as a bet on your behalf and without your knowledge, but with your permission. Because all of the information is hidden in plain sight. In your face is where it's hidden. You're going to lose this battle unless you've been hidden in Jesus Christ, the only one who warns you that the new age is a trap and that it is the climax to this epic drama being played out on planet Earth. Now hang on, brace yourself, because I ain't going to let you down. This is a magazine called The New Age, but if you press rewind, you can find its source. Supreme Council of 33 Degree Freemasonry. This one stretches way back to 1922. See the twin pillars of Freemasonry? Look, this is 19th century Freemason and New Age pioneer Helena Blavatsky on the cover of this edition. She's the one who wrote that darkness is absolute light and that Satan is the god of our planet and that we are in hell. But do you think the readers of these magazines are told that? No. Darkness is sold as light. Satan is disguised, and it's him in the details. This Masonic New Age magazine was the precursor to all magazines and trends, promoting the great deception of self-love and spirituality. Meanwhile, you're feeding off the plate that Luciferians serve you. Look at how the Satanic Bible in 1966 reveals the reality behind the curtain. Evidence of a new Satanic age. A new age. The new satanic age, all rigged and all propelled by Freemasonry, Satanism's magic cloak. After all, and I think you should have guessed by now, that Anton Zandor LaVey, the founder of the satanic church, the one who vowed to help destroy Christianity, is himself a Freemason. I can't prove it to you, but I know it because of not only his obvious fondness of the fraternity of the Freemasons and the mention of it in his Satanic Bible and its vital role in the Satanic takeover, but also because of the symbols, specifically this one, generally called the Devil's Claw or the Lion's Paw. Freemason James de Rothschild displaying the Devil's Claw or the Lion's Paw. X Factus L.A. Reid showing the Devil's Horns next to fellow Freemason Avril Lavigne. The secret society signed for the devil's number and displaying the devil's claw over and over. The better example is with New Age guru Annie Besant, co-writer of Lucifer magazine and 33rd degree Freemason, also showing the lion's paw here and here. But the best example I have is with Aerosmith, guitarist Joe Perry clearly displaying the sign of the master of the second veil of the Freemasons and right next to him, Stephen Tyler doing the lion's paw. Clearly both Freemasons secretly showing their allegiance with symbols. And here's Anton LaVey displaying the same Masonic symbol. Yes, a Freemason founded the Satanic Church. Now that we know who's really behind the so-called New Age, listen to some of the confessions of the New Ages in their literature. Once you scrape past all the talk of spirituality and love and rainbows, New Age author, feminist and hater of Christianity, Barbara G. Walker writes in The Woman's Encyclopedia of Myths and Secrets, a triple six, 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 was the magic number of the triple Aphrodite. She further compliments the number when she calls it the miraculous number 666. Speaking of the New Age to come, PhD Christopher Hyatt writes in Undoing Yourself, as we moved closer and closer to the well-planned for and long-awaited invocation of the Prime Minister unto the very King of Hell, the Grand Vicar of Lord Lucifer. Yes, the very well-planned for and very long-awaited indeed. Do you see what's coming? Mr. Hyde also enlightens us in the fact that opposites do not exist apart from the mind. Evil and good are all in your head. That's why you should brace yourself because these are the minds creating the new world system. He confirms this. The new age will require new men, men of high consciousness and fortitude. All of our present dogma models will crumble. 
He means the Christian and the Christian social structure will crumble. In the introduction to the book, another PhD, Robert Anton Wilson, tells you what the New Age really thinks of the Christian social structure, which you have more or less enjoyed your whole life, Christian or not. Christianity and democracy have been among the worst disasters to ever befall the human race. I told you atheists, you're going to miss Christianity when it's gone. Here's a picture of Robert with the Masonic eye in the triangle on the wall behind him. Remember where the term New Age came from. So once again, do you think that the new system, the new age, is going to be democratic? A system that respects you or gives a damn about what you think once it's in place? Let me answer it this way. Christopher Hyatt quotes from one of his literary heroes and famed philosopher, Friedrich Nietzsche, who said, What is more harmful than any vice? Active sympathy for the ill-constituted and weak. Christianity. So to be a Christian and to actively have sympathy for the weak, that's the worst vice. That's backward and evil. So the answer is no. This is what I'm warning you about. And look, Frederick's work has exerted a profound influence on modern history. That's from Wikipedia. You know what else Frederick said? You probably won't find this on Wikipedia. The domestic animal, the herd animal, the sick animal man. That's the Christian. And what book of Friedrich Nietzsche were these quotes pulled from? The Antichrist. Nietzsche also wrote, Beyond Good and Evil. That's how the all-seeing eye sees things, remember? So does Christopher Hyatt mention mass murder and depopulation in his book? Sure, here you go. Those who would survive can do so only by grasping the vision of what lies ahead. The new wave that will carry them into an interesting future. Yeah, where the vicar of Lucifer is God and Prime Minister. He openly admits the identity of this man. This Antichrist that most of you still think is a fairy tale figure from a fairy tale book. Jesus calls him the man of sin whose number is 666. The actual Antichrist. Beloved of the secret societies. Yes, people, the new age is satanic, actually and literally. On the front cover of this book in which Christopher was co-writer, you can clearly see the eye in the triangle of the Freemasons above the Baphomet. Christopher admits in another book that both satanic cults and Christian fundamentalists are closer to seeing the truth than most normal people. Yes, indeed, how true that is. In Coming World Changes, Harriet and Homer Curtis speak of a prophecy they received from a mysterious spirit titled King of the World. Now, I wonder who that could be. Think not that any country in this broad world can escape. And they also speak of the long-expected great teacher, the king of the new one world government. The victors will remain as the seed of the new race to people the new land for the new sixth great race. This is the race that Luciferian Lady Gaga referred to. All part of the plan. In Threshold to Tomorrow, New Age author Ruth Montgomery writes on page 206 that only those open to the reality of one world will be around to enjoy it. Sounds like another vague suggestion for mass murder. The Vera Elder Stanley's book title implies much the same thing. Initiation of the world. That's right. It's coming. You think Vera hasn't been initiated into the secret one-eyed religion? What else has she authored? How about the finding of the third eye? The all-seeing eye. New Age author John Randolph Price writes in The Planetary Commission, in question and answer form, how do you define the Antichrist? The answer is pretty amazing. Any individual or group who denies the divinity of man as exemplified by Jesus Christ, the higher self of each individual, which Jesus Christ never exemplified because he is God. If you deny that me, men and women are divine gods, you are unfit for the glorious New Age Kingdom. And you are the definition of Antichrist. In Practical Spirituality, he prepares his readers for a population drop of 2.5 billion people before the New Age era can begin. On page 32 of New Age author Barbara Marks Hubbard's book, 
Happy Birthday Planet Earth, she states that people will either change or die. That's the choice, she says. Notice the New Age has a new gospel. Yet all the while, the world will be neglected of the information in the real gospels, where it warns and predicts. For if someone comes and preaches another Jesus, not the Jesus whom we preached, or another gospel, you are most beautifully tolerant of them. In the Book of Knowledge, The Keys of Enoch, the writer has a quote-unquote direct experience with two spirits, Enoch and Metatron, and they share with the writer spiritually scientific teachings regarding the new system of things soon to be fully manifest. The reason this work is considered extra special amongst its readers is because it was the first book to point out the alignment between the Great Pyramid and the constellation of Orion. The first book ever. That's basically proof that these spirits, Enoch and Metatron, are the real deal. Not only that, it was also the first book to show the direct relationship between DNA coding and the divine name. That's pretty serious, and the atheists should be really waking up by now, because this is the world's most powerful and secret religion we're talking about, nothing less. The writer was told that those who govern the earth are those who have fallen from the heavens. He calls them the masters, and even states that they were punished with penalties that were assigned to each. These are the fallen angels of the Bible people. These are the masters of the Masonic New Age. As proven here in one of the illustrations from the book, same symbology. This worldwide catastrophe that is coming will bring about a complete reorganization of Earth's life system. And like all high-grade initiates of the, of the secret societies, every attempt is made to bring positivity to the number of the Vicar of Lucifer. I was given instruction to use the specific light harmonics 666, 999, and 121212. The spirits further inform the writer of the Keys of Enoch that the pattern 666 is used to identify you with, the, with respect to the Earth's vibration. The number of the beast of the book of revelation of Jesus Christ is not only being glorified, it's manifesting in the world. And from another illustration from the book, once again, the same image we see being used over and over with the eye on top of the pyramid. This is the secret religion that encompasses us and has been influencing us for decades upon decades. Two to three centuries, in fact. Just like the Gospels explain, this is an absolute counterfeit of the truth. Christ is mentioned everywhere, but not Jesus Christ. No, this is the Antichrist spirit, who will eventually manifest and appear to the world as one man. Doesn't sound so mythical anymore when you see that the enemies of Jesus Christ and those behind the New World System, they use biblical terms. And Christ, to depict the antithesis, the anti of the real Christ, their saviour. And these spirits from the world we can't see are the ones who taught mankind the sick art of witchcraft. Look at who supplies this book online, sacredmagic.com. You know what magic really is and what it really entails now. So once again, you can see the connection, the relationship. If you still think that this phrase, New World Order, is a conspiracy theory, you're suffering from a medical condition. On the Lucius Trust website, the consultants to the European Union, you find the statement that the New World Servers are occupied with the task of inaugurating the New World Order. In the same article, this shocking admission is made. Two-thirds of humanity will stand upon the path at the close of this age, and with that, one-third will die, or to put it surreptitiously, will be held over for later unfoldment. That's the Lucius Trust, the word Lucius being the replacement for the word Lucifer, who works hand in hand with the EU, the European Union, stating that two and a half billion human beings are planned to be killed off, all predicted by Jesus and only Jesus. And if you still think I'm joking or misleading you about what these people are and what they plan to do, here's a book written by the founder of the Lucius Trust, the Freemason Alice Bailey, Education in the New Age, where she will educates you about mass population reduction. When a form proves inadequate or too diseased 
or too crippled for the expression of that purpose, it is, from the point of view of the hierarchy, no disaster when that form has to go. Death is not a disaster to be feared. The work of the destroyer is not really cruel or undesirable. Do you see? Did you hear that? Through the all-seeing eye of Lucifer, the destroyer, for the purpose of the new world, death and mass murder isn't evil, it's good. And Alice Bailey in The Labours of Hercules also tries to re-educate us and protect that God-forsaken number, predicted in the Gospels to be associated with evil. The number of the physical plane activity is called the number of the beast. This idea seems to have a horrible fascination with many, but what it really means is that Virgo is the symbol of triplicity, six on the physical plane, six on the emotional plane, and six on the mental plane. Not six, six, six at all. And one more time, from the consultants to the European Union, from their website, Lucius Trust, to prove to you that these people are all working toward and waiting for the world leader. The coming of the avatar and the advent of the coming one are the keynotes of the prevalent expectancy. After everything I've shown you, are you going to ignore this? Or worse, are you going to trust these people? Of whom were predicted to this very condemnation 2,000 years ago. Right down to a one world system, depopulation, and to the man who will carry the number 666. And with it, implement a new system in which you won't be able to buy or sell unless you receive a mark in your hand or forehead. And what's just been announced by Business Insider? Cashless Society. Due to this, by 2024. This is the manufactured trend for the world. And you better believe it's fulfilling biblical prophecy. You know that book that's been ripped out of schools and hysterically discredited? Why do you think there's a single eye displayed on all the covers of George Orwell's dystopian novel 1984? It's because the one-eyed religion is the one in permanent control, where democracy and Christianity have been utterly extinguished, and the remaining population live in a whole new level of permanent communism. It is well known that George Orwell himself had ties with, with the Fabian Society, which is a secret society complete with degrees of initiation, tucked away neatly somewhere under the wing of Freemasonry. The Fabian Society's logo used to be this, a wolf in sheep's clothing, which is exactly what Freemasonry is. And it was a metaphor for gradually advancing socialism. And socialism is communism for slow learners. This level of denial on our part has been brought on by mass propaganda because everything has been weaponized to work against you and God's truth. Education, entertainment and economics. You're a slave to each one. And Freemasonry is the slave master. Listen to the Grand Pontiff of Universal Freemasonry tell you about it in Morals and Dogma. The blind force of the people is a force that must be economized and also managed as the blind force of steam. You are just blind energy to them, made to be enslaved. This force must have a brain. Who do you think the brain is? Freemasonry is the brain, obviously. And he's saying that we're just the body parts that move to its will. Look, these are some pictures I took of the local obelisk in my town. An erect phallus hidden in plain sight. See how the cube at the bottom is rough? In Freemasonry, it's called the rough ashlar stone. Well, watch this from Morals and Dogma. The rough ashlar is the people, rude and unorganized. Once again... You can see what this secret society secretly thinks of you. Now see how the stone built on top is smooth? That's called the perfect ashla. The perfect ashla is the state, the rulers. Yeah, the one eye sex cult of Freemasonry, which hides its master, Satanism. Now, where is this brain taking us? Remember, this guy is the general who fought against the United States forces to uphold the institution of slavery. And the Grand Pontiff of Universal Freemasonry, who calls you the vulgar herd and the ignorant multitude, and admits that yes, unbelievably so, Lucifer is the light bearer. This is the highest authority in Freemasonry. 
the secret religion of all our leaders and idols. Believe it. Now listen to this. The papacy and rival monarchies, all that will become the heritage of the temple, meaning the temple of Freemasonry. The world will soon come to us for its sovereigns and pontiffs. We shall constitute the equilibrium of the universe and be rulers over the masters of the world. They're going to own it all. And it's true. The papacy and the monarchy have fallen into their hands. All Freemasons now. This is a 150 year old book, so you can see how far ahead they plan while we stay ignorant. How do you suppose that they won't achieve the New World Order? The New World Order of Death. Of combined and systematic movement and effort, the great revolution prepared for by the ages will begin to march. The future is all planned for by them, and the revolution prepared for by the ages is coming. And it'll look like a natural occurring event, just as current events seem natural. Lastly, from his other book, Legenda, and reading from the ancient and accepted Scottish writer Freemasonry, Albert writes, and thus the warfare against the powers of evil, meaning Christianity, that crushed the order of the temple in the 1300s, goes steadily on and freedom marches ever onward toward the conquest of the world. The conquest of the world, guys. And this is their method. Ingenious as it is, the double-headed eagle, the left and right paradigm. Whether you are pro-abortion or life, prefer Maccas or KFC, Ford or Holden, vote Liberal or Labour, shop at Coles or Woolies, go for the Parramatta Eels or the Canterbury Bulldogs, always the two most opposing forces, the result always feeds the one belly. The two heads always serve the same Masonic beast. Do you get it? That's number one. Number two is the horribly magnificent motto of their double-headed eagle, Ordo Ab Cal. That means order out of chaos. It's the ultimate way to achieve your sinister goals while looking like a hero. With one hand, they create beautiful and noble things. With the other hand, the hidden hand, they destroy and pervert. Then the helping hand comes back in to save or fix things again, alternating from one to the other, while nudging toward a predetermined goal until finally reaching that goal. That set in mind in the first place. All the while, you never knew that the same hand that's saving you is the same hand that was destroying you in the first place. Order out of chaos. Their order out of their chaos. Another way to look at it is this. Z creates or exploits a problem, then attributes blame to others. Y reacts by asking Z for protection and help to solve the problem. Z offers the solution that was planned for by them long before the crisis occurred. Ordo ab cao, order out of chaos. Now you can change Z and Y to suit any scenario. For example, your best friend who wants to sleep with you creates or exploits a problem, then attributes blame to others. You react by asking your best friend who wants to sleep with you for protection and help to solve the problem. Your best friend who wants to sleep with you offers the solution that was planned by them long before the crisis occurred. Each time your best friend gets closer and closer to you until eventually they're in your bed. How about your employee creates or exploits a problem, then attributes blame to others. The employer reacts by asking the employee for help to solve the problem. The employee offers the solution that was planned by them long before the crisis occurred. The employee eventually gets the promotion. But this is the way I really want to put it. The government creates or exploits a problem, then attributes blame to others. The population reacts by asking the government for protection and help to solve the problem. The government offers the solution that was planned by them long before the crisis even occurred. This is how the great revolution prepared for by the ages by the Freemasons will begin. So who's going to warn you? Even modern Christianity is steered by Freemasonry. Hillsong won't warn the sheep about Freemasonry and the one world government. What, the Hillsong senior pastor who wrote these books and lives here? <laughs> no chance. Did modern day Christian heroes like Billy Graham warn you about Freemasonry? Well, no, because here he is giving the Master Mason grip to other Christian giants like Paul and Jan Crouch, all Freemasons. Here he gives the same third degree handshake to former President 
Harry Truman, and here to a Muslim Freemason. Billy is listed as a Freemason in the 33rd degree Albert Mackey's History of Freemasonry by the publisher on the inside flap. Billy's son, Franklin Graham, also won't ever expose Freemasonry because he's too busy eating at Voodoo Donuts where they sell these donuts and these pentagram donuts. More Christian heavyweights like John Hagee or Haggy throwing up the devil's horns. He'll never preach against Freemasonry. Neither will all these world famous pastors throwing up the devil's horns. The very popular Ray Comfort even stated that he wasn't a Freemason. Well, here he is giving a perfect Masonic handshake with pastoral giant Joyce Meyer. Do either of them expose Freemasonry or the fact that it's the driving force behind the one world government? All predicted by Jesus? Of course not. What about Christian radio or the Christian music scene? No, not a single word of warning whatsoever regarding the satanic church that lives and breathes all around us. Freemasons like Bono, wearing the Christian name tag, his whole band of Freemasons. Bono too should know better than anyone that a one world government is a trap as foretold in the Bible. But Bono supports it. Oh yeah, he works for it. Just like the Masonic Pope does. Even if by some freak chance they didn't know any better. No disciple of Jesus can bend their knee to another man in the Masonic Lodge, calling him master and swear to keep secrets. Look what they call each other from the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry. Master Mason, Grand Master, Most Eminent Grand Master, and the most appalling uh, title, title of all, Most Worshipful Master. Most Worshipful. Do you see how extra deluded the Christian Freemason has to be when Jesus said, Do not be called Master, because one is your Master. And what about all those oaths? Don't worry, Jesus covered that too. What I tell you is this, do not put yourself under oath at all, but let your yes mean yes and your no mean no. How's that for an idea? But the Freemasons yes means no, because they all swear to lie and conceal from the first degree initiation all the way through. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim it from the rooftops. That's Jesus. You see the contrast? How precise he was and still is. You think Bono and the Pope don't know about the Masonic calendar and how it's not the same calendar as ours? From the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, the real date of the world is found by adding 4,000 to the vulgar era. This whole Christian era is vulgar. So the year in the Masonic world is actually 6021. And this abbreviation is in French, the vulgar era, beginning since the year of the Lord, since the year of Jesus Christ. That's how they feel about the current age, which is coming to a mind-blowing end, by design. Now, do you think Freemasons aren't capable of mass murder? Well, Joseph Stalin murdered approximately 20 million people, and he was a Freemason, displaying the sign of the master of the Second Veil of Freemasonry. Vladimir Lenin was the leader of the Bolshevik Party, and he paved the way for the mass murder of 60 million people, mostly Christians, and he was a proud Freemason. And ladies and gentlemen, this is Adolf Hitler, a Freemason, clearly giving the grip of a Master Mason. And here he sits next to his military leader, Hermann Göring, who is also displaying his allegiance to Freemasonry with a hidden hand. He even displays the Masonic Triangle just like fellow Masonic brother Jay-Z. The mind of Hitler surrounds you now. It just hasn't pounced yet. The mind of Hitler isn't isolated to some portion of the world anymore. It now encompasses you. Hitler is everywhere. Far more clever than you can imagine. Evolved and sleeping in your bed. It's easy to say that's impossible. Once upon a time, 70 million Germans adored him. Once upon a time, Hitler was named Man of the Year by Time magazine. You've been fooled by the satanic machine. Please don't try to get inside to the mind of Freemasonry. It's like trying to understand Satan himself. You can't and you don't want to. Freemasons will make friends with their most hated enemies. They will cross-dress their morals to move closer to their goal. 
They'll make the English language void of any meaning by turning everything inside out and upside down to camouflage its objectives. They will simultaneously create charities along with the greatest machines to ever destroy the hearts of men like pornography. They will sell their souls to gain the world. They are a dichotomy, a paradox, a lie that loves to speak the truth and a truth that loves to lie. They are a snake eating their own tail, consuming what they produce. Freemasonry is hell, dressed as heaven.